Welcome back to Fullerton College, Print 145, Variable Data Printing. This is Professor Ben Kewitt, and today we're going to take a brief look at a Photoshop effect you can use to make better U-image photos for advertising and marketing use using the XMPy Variable Data Print software plugin. That was a mouthful, but hi. Good to see you guys. Anyways, so this is a way of making a wood burn, looking like someone took a hot branding iron and burned it into there for things like, you know, steakhouse restaurants, but other things too. This is actually a rather common thing that people would ask to have done using a personalized view image type project. Um, so let's take a look at how this is done. Just like the previous one we did in the woodening part one, we have to start with a wooden background. Now, there are a plethora of Photoshop tutorials online about how to make fake wood burn and branding looks. However, while I went through and tried to vet them for you, I discovered that almost all of them involve rasterizing the type. And to redefine that, in case you guys aren't remembering in the moment, rasterizing type means that instead of letting the computer use the font as a font, it takes a picture of it and remembers the font that you had as the pixels that make up the letters. And once you've done this, it is no longer a font. It is a picture of a font. It's very similar to outlining that you do in Illustrator, but because this is not a vector uh, program, this is a raster program, rasterizing the type means you'd convert it into a picture of itself based on pixels. And just like when you outline an Illustrator, you can no longer type or edit it. And if you can no longer type or edit your type, then you're not able to use variable data input to make those changes. It becomes a static element. If you wish to look at those things, you may be able to glean some other information around the edges, but some of the effects they use require rasterization. And so I've made my own version here for you guys to look at where the type remains typable, meaning this is a fully variable compatible version of the wood burn effect. And you have to make some concessions here and there to make things work sometimes, you know. All right, so let's take a look without further ado at how we do this. Hey, look, I just happen to have a blank one available right here. So here's my wooden background yet again. And we're going to start yet again by typing. I'll hit T for text. You automatically get your warm ipsum. Um, if I will do this demo uh, using the tag that we would use first underscore name, but spelling it right. Just like if we were doing this as a variable data, a U image creation. I will use the transform tools to make this larger, 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 larger. One of the things that I will say in, in this, uh, you can use a lot of fonts. This, is, this type of work in U image is one of those times and places where it's actually okay and kind of fun to use weird, strange looking novelty fonts. For instance, this would be the time and place for something like black oak. You'd have to torture it a bit to get it to fit and shrink it and stretch it and do things you should. I would normally say never do to a type, but you know what? It could work for this sort of thing. However, I will stick with Babus because it's easier to see on my screen. There we go, we're back to Babus. Babus is a good blocks not block, a good blocky uh, sans serif type. It'll work. Another thing we should do before we move on too far, I will make this bigger. Scale it up a little larger. If remember, holding option lets you scale from the center. I used command T to use the free transform. And while I'm still selected, I'm going to grab the corner where my uh, cursor turns into a little corner arrow and skew it a few degrees. This does a couple different things for you in the design. One, Remember that a lot of variable data is used for advertising and marketing pieces that want to grab attention quickly. And one of the fastest ways to grab attention to something is to throw it off the normal grid. People are used to seeing information and it's a very effective way to communicate, by the way. Don't vary from this unless you're doing it on purpose for emphasis. The, the grid layout of most written and designed things. They're all in squares and rectangles and all the lines of text go left to right and they're parallel to the page. But if you have one thing that's eek, just a little bit off. Just not quite square and straight with the rest of it. It calls a ton of attention to this jaunty looking thing. 
So here he is, Frank Sinatra, all blue eyes. Great musician, great entertainer, possible very strong mafia connections. You know, history is kind of interesting like that. But anyways, here he is in his nice, well-tailored suit with his tie all but his shirt buttoned up to the top and his tie properly tied and knotted. And just to show a little bit of interest and a little bit of uh, daring fashion speaking, you've got his hat. His signature fedora is not square to his head. Oh no, it's tipped off to the side a bit in a jaunty angle. And it really draws attention to his face because there is that diagonal line cutting across everything else that's so symmetrical and so level and so parallel that you are immediately drawn to what is this thing? And I don't mean it in a bad way either. Cool guy, cool hat, nice style. So this is one of the reasons that we would do that sort of jaunty angle on our text. Of course, in addition to just calling a bunch of attention to it, by putting it at a slightly off angle, it makes it, gives a little bit more of a look of actually being wood burned or, you know, hit with a hot burning iron or branding iron onto the wood, because you wouldn't do that perfectly square to the wood, probably, even though you might. Uh, people don't expect to see that. It looks more rugged if you burn it at a slight angle. Okay. All right, so now let's start with the effects. Actually, one of the first things we're gonna to need to do this, uh, the amount of effects that are necessary to make this look good involves more than one layer of the text. So before we do our effects, let's hold down Option. Um, I believe that would be uh, Alt for you Windows users and drag the layer. So we now have two layers of the same thing. And this will still work. Uh, when you use the uImage tag, it doesn't just look for one instance of the tag when it's gonna go do this. It'll replace every first underscore name with the first underscore name from the data source. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now. Uh, and yes, it's white on purpose. I'm gonna turn off the upper layer. We're only gonna use the lower one. One of the first things I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the blend mode. Make sure I'm recording. I'm always panicked that I'm not. I'm gonna change the blend mode to color burn or linear burn, just like multiply. If you use these things in this in the whole darkened section of your blend mode options, it's gonna start combining the numbers and the math of the brightness and darkness of the different layers of colors with each other. And remembering that in going back to the very, very, very basics of computing of off and on, black is off, zero. White is on, one. Everything between zero and one, as far as this program is concerned, the shades of gray are all percentages of how much one there is. One is all on, zero is all off. If you multiply a number by one, you get itself. So by making a white text and calling it multiply or color burn or darken or anything from that whole section, it's gonna come out as invisible. But here's the fun part. We're gonna open this up. We're actually, we have it selected. We're gonna hit effects down here and we're gonna add ourselves an outer glow. Outer glow will be set to multiply. Oh, look, it looks good already. Set to multiply with an opacity near 80. Just use black for this one. Um, technique should be softer, although you could go precise. Up to you. You can actually fuss around with this a little bit. This is not a hard and fast, must be one exact way. Although I'm still gonna go the way I did it just to keep it good. The contour talks about how it's going to uh, go from light to dark. I prefer a linear uh, diagonal on this one because that, that looks better although you could do different things. And as you combine them to each other, some of them look downright awkward. This one, the, the curve also does a pretty good job, but we'll do my, my basic one and we say, okay, great. We've made one layer. Now this is already an interesting look. And if you're using kind of a spray painting look somewhere, you're trying to make it look like it's been stenciled or partially stenciled onto something, this in itself can be a valuable effect for making good looking designs. However, that's not what we're doing today. So now let's turn this off to make things easier and we'll turn on the other layer. This time, we're gonna change the color of the text. We're gonna select all the text and we're gonna grab the eyedropper tool and we're gonna pick ourselves a dark color from the background on this one. One of these darker brown, gray, black thingies in one of the dark knots of the wood. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna go ahead and double click over here and tell it to choose the color we just picked, yes. And now this text is dark. This is gonna actually take on the look of the burnt branded wood itself. All right, so now we have a few more things to do to this layer. We're gonna change it from normal 
to linear burn. That's not doing what I hoped it would do. We'll just do color burn. Sorry about that. I guess I picked a too dark a color this time. That will preserve a little bit of the look of the wood grain underneath. It looks really good under first, not as great under name. Then we're going to add a few more effects to this. This is going to get yet another outer glow. And this one is going to be a little bit more intensely close to just opacity can be high, but the noise and the spread and the size are all going to be a lot smaller. It's going to be a much tighter outer glow than the other one, like that. And we're also going to add to it a little bit of a bevel and emboss. This gives a good three-dimensional look. I like to use the inner bevel, a hard chisel. We're going to let it go down not too far. And this will just help give it a little bit more definition. I'm going to say OK here. Turn on the other layer, and you now have what looks like a pretty good burned-in name. This you'll hook up to your InDesign document the way you normally would, and set up your tags and your uImage uh, code in XMPy just like last time, and you'll be able to create a wood-burned look that is variable depending on the person who's receiving the postcard.